So hi there. In this video, I'm going to go over how to do the hangman game in Scratch. Um, so let's look at what we have here. It's actually fairly complicated to do this, but, but has some interesting aspects to it. So here's our game board. Um, it when you click this button, the game begins, and um, and then the user enters their letter guess or their word guess down here, right? And if they guess incorrectly, uh, part of the hung person appears. And there's six parts to the hung person in this version of the game. And if they if they uh, if they guess a letter correctly, then the, nothing gets added to the hung person, and it shows here. <clears throat> the position of that letter. And if there's more than one of that letter, it will show both positions of that letter. Okay? This little red dot, by the way, is, is the sprite that is controlling this box. This box is controlled by the wizard sprite. Okay? So uh, let's just do a quick version of this. So if I type A uh, there, Told me that letter is not in the word, and part of my uh, hung person appears. And I will do E. I guess the best strategy is to go for the vowels. Okay. And um, uh, I'm going to go for O. Okay. And uh, I'm going to get some wrong here. I know what this word is now because I know the list of words. Uh, and if I keep doing this, and it's telling me I have three remaining guesses, and I just keep doing Z, I'm just persistent, and whatever. I'll do X for a change. And then I'll do Z again. And, uh, and it tells me, oh well, good try. And then it tells me what the word is, torrent. Okay, and then press the button to play again. So there's a lot going on here, right? So let's let's break it down and do it step by step. Look through it, look through this. So the script for button, which sets this thing off, is kind of like the constructor in uh, a Java class. What I'm doing is setting a whole bunch of variables here. I'm not going to go over these individually, but I've named the variables so that they have meaningful names, right? So they sort of hint at what they do. Um, and uh, this first one sets the word that I'm guessing. It's picking um, a word randomly from a list of words. So if I um, come over here and go scroll down and do words, and come back, those are the words that, um, that are in my list. There are nine of them. Okay, and one of these words is being randomly chosen each time that you click on the button. Okay, so I set a bunch of variables. Then I repeat for the length of the word, whatever it is, I, um, I set a, another list. I guess I should show you this list too. Found letters. Um, I set however many letters are uh, there are in the world word. If there's six letters, I set one through six here to false, meaning I haven't yet found that letter, right? Uh, because of the quirks that the way um, the <coughs> excuse me of the way Scratch does lists. Um, there's other stuff in here, but we're not looking at it. We're just looking at the part of this list or array that matches the length of the word that we're dealing with, okay? So we have these two, two lists or arrays, okay? So for the length of what the word is, what I do is I make sure all those positions in that array we were just looking at are false because we haven't found those letters yet. And, uh, and that's it here. And then I broadcast set background, which makes sure that if, uh, there were previous 
partial people hanging here, it clears them out. And then I do begin game, okay? So basically at this point, I wanna transfer over to the sprites, uh, sorry, to the scripts of the wizard. So let's look at those. And uh, we'll shrink this down. Okay, so here, here's begin game. Let's go through this as quickly as we can. Broadcast show empty word, right? It does that, it makes the word blanks, or, you know, show up. Uh, set game over to false, because we want to loop until game, is o game over is true. Uh, set build word, build word to zero, set check to uh, nothing. Uh, this, that's, this is just a little um, idiot proofing, as it's called, right? So uh, until the user enters something that has a length of it greater than zero, it's just going to stick in this loop right, right in here until somebody enters something. So if I just hit return here, um, right? It tells enter a letter or, or your word guess in the box below, right? Enter a letter or your word guess in the box below. So it's just... Idiot proofing or error trapping is the nicer way to say it. Um, okay, so then when we get through that and the user's actually typed a word uh, or a letter, we broadcast one guess and wait. So one guess is set, need, none of these script blocks pick up one guess, so that must be over in our in here. And it is. Okay, so when I receive one guess, I set a bunch of variables. And I say, if the length of answer is greater than one, what does that mean? It's a word that they typed in. So then I broadcast they guessed a word, which is back uh, on the wizard side. And we'll look at that. That's pretty straightforward. That just checks to see if the word they typed in is the word. Um, else broadcast uh, the guessed a letter, which would be they guessed a letter. Okay, they guessed a letter. And this is pretty much what you have to write in Java uh, for the for the uh, for the Java version of this game, right? It's not identical to this, but the logic is very similar to this. You also have to write the the guess to word, but that's really simple. Okay, so this is where all the work is going to be for you, and you're going to have this to look at and to sort of guide you in writing your Java code. Okay, so let's look at that. They guess the letter. Okay. Uh, we set a couple of variables. Repeat the length of the word. We set letter to the letter at position of the word. So this is the actual word. So we set the variable letter to it. So say it was torrent, like the word we started out with. This starts out with T. If item position of found letters equals true, that's that array of falses, so true falses that I showed you earlier. If it's true, it means we already found that letter, right? So. Uh, Set built word to join built word and join letter and space. So what's going on here? What we're doing is we're gradually building up the let the word that will be displayed here, right? Uh, by adding letters or these underscore characters to built word one at a time as we go through. So in this case, um, and, and the, that's for so that there's a space between them, and. Um, so uh, if, we, if we've already gotten that letter, we just add it to the built word that we're gradually building up eventually to display here, okay? Then we just move on to the next letter, right? So that was if we'd already found it. Else, if letter equals answer, answer is the variable that contains what the user typed in, uh, and letter remembers the letter a particular position of the word, that means they guessed the letter correctly, we just Add that to built word. Uh, modify the array of booleans, right? Because that word is now found. So we have to make the the uh, position in that array that matches the position of the letter to true. Um, set guess letter to true because we did guess the letter correctly. And change letters guess by one. This just moves us along. Else we didn't guess it. And now we just add the underscore character. Right, and then just this just moves us along uh, the position along, and then say built word, okay? So it will print out the word here, 
the let the, sorry the built word which contains any letters that have already been guessed. So if I do A again, right, those two letters were placed there in this block of code because letter twice as it, as it was moved through the word was equal to answer. Answer is equal to A. So those two A's got added to the word and, the, and these underscores come from this line right here which, um, which <clears throat> indicate that those are letters that have not been guessed yet. Okay? So, um, all right. So when that's done, um, we do feedback on letter guess. So where's that? Let's book, put, go back to the wizard. So feedback on letter guess, right? So this is just what the wizard says here. Uh, This this is if um, if the length of the word equals letters guessed, it means that they've actually. This is the case where they've just slowly built up their guesses, but they never actually guessed the word. Uh, so you set the guessed word to word broadcast. They guessed a word, which will come down here, and we'll look at that in a second. Right. Else, uh, if guest letter equals true, they got it, then say, good guess, my friend, and guesses remaining doesn't change. Uh, and uh, else, we subtract, we, we chain, add one to the number of guesses they've made. Uh, and uh, I guess that would be sort of bad guesses. Um, and, and tell them that letter is not in the word and tell them how many guesses they have remaining. So if you run the program, you'll see that being executed. Now let's just look down here that they guessed a word. Right? Um, just, just as an aside, remember that we, we left this method with broadcast one guess, right? Went over to the the programs in here, they've called back to here, and uh, eventually we're going to have to get back and continue on from here, but we're not quite there yet. Okay, so if they guessed a word, you just check to see if it's correct, uh, and uh, and if so, tell them so. In other words, add one to their guess count and tell them they were wrong. Okay, so let's go back to here. And remember, we got here by feedback on letter guess. So finally, there, <coughs> there are no more lines to, to run in this uh, method, we'll call it. And what happens when that happens is the same in Java. It returns to whatever called this, which is back in here. So here's what, here's what called it. Uh, and uh, OK, so now we're back from that. And we set the background to um, set up variable background to join a guest count plus one and then broadcast that background. Well, what's this about? This is the last thing we haven't looked at. So this is uh, this script is in the stage. And what it does is it um, when it receives that background, it switches to background background. So if we look at our backgrounds here, we have a bunch of different backgrounds with the person gradually uh, appearing. Okay? That's all that does. And they're named A1 through A7. Okay? And that's so that's pretty straightforward. So now we are almost done. Right? Uh, okay, if guess count is equal to six, that means they've had six bad guesses. You tell them uh, they lost. Um, you show the word. And uh, you wait a couple seconds, set game over to true, which it will stop this repeat until loop, and tell them to press the button to play again. Okay? So that 
<clears throat> that is the whole thing. And I'm going to send this to you, and you can you can use it to sort of uh, help figure out um, what you need to do for the for the the Java program. As I said, most of what you're doing in the Java program has to do with this part of checking sort of the stuff inside this repeat loop. Um, it's a little bit, it, you, you do it a little bit differently in Java, uh, it, but it's the same idea of your, of your going through and your first checking um, at, at each letter position, you're checking to see if the matching position in the Boolean array is true or false, right? And uh, <clears throat> else, you're seeing if uh, if their letter that they they guessed is the letter that's at a position. Right? We're going to look at all the positions of the word, and if it is, then you you both modify the array of booleans to indicate that that position has been found, and you build your word some more. And finally, else you um, you set uh, <clears throat> uh, you, you just they didn't guess the word, okay? So, um, so that is that, and uh, yeah, I'll stop there.